Pastor Esta Rosario, and on behalf of Woodmar United Methodist Church, I welcome you to our online worship service in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've been sharing with you that our church council met and approved a tentative plan to reopen our building in three phases. Phase one will begin on July 19th with in person worship. And we are encouraging those who are most vulnerable to the coronavirus to please continue worshiping online until the threat has passed. Details about these phases are in the July newsletter and they'll be sent through email and also mailed to your homes. Today, we will celebrate Holy Communion. So I invite you to hit pause and go to your kitchen to pick up a piece of bread or a cracker and some juice to use as your communion elements later in the service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118, 24. I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God and I will say of the Lord, He is my strength. Oh, and I will say He's my refuge my fortress, my shield. I will rest in 
in the shadow of the Almighty. Fortress, my shield, and I will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will dwell in the shelter, I will dwell in the shelter. I can call on Him, call on and Him, and He will answer. I can call on Him, on Him, and He'll be with me. I can call on Him in time of trouble. My fortress, my shield, and I will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will dwell in the shelter of the Almighty. I will dwell in the shelter of the Almighty. Today's Old Testament lesson is Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this day to worship you. Please clear our minds of all that would distract us from this moment and help us to be fully present to you. And may we hear what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be wondering why in the world I'm preaching a series entitled The Advent Conspiracy in July. Well, last December I preached a series with the same title and I realized as I was preparing that first sermon, that this is something we need to be thinking about all year long. And if we're going to be able to carry it out in the pressure cooker times of Christmas is just four weeks away, we need to focus on it much sooner than when Advent is upon us. On December 1st, 2019, I said I would preach this series in July 2020, and here we are. The beauty of this series is that it speaks to living our faith out loud all year long. For followers of Jesus, every aspect of life is to be lived out of faith in Him. According to the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary, the word conspire has a few meanings, but for our purposes, I chose two of them. And the first is scheme, a plan or program of action. And the second is to act in harmony toward a common end. So over the next four weeks, we will 
prayerfully compose a plan or program of action to act in harmony toward a common end for this upcoming Advent. So here's the conspiracy idea. Imagine if instead of running around like crazy preparing for the holidays, we choose to worship fully, spend less, give more, and love all. If we would all choose to do these things, how would that change the way we celebrate Christmas? And what kind of an impact would that have on our homes, our church, our community, our nation, and our world? To worship fully, spend less, give more, and love all is countercultural. Our culture is consumer driven. When we enter the season of Advent, which is meant to be a time of introspection and growing deeper in our faith as we prepare for the coming of Christ, we can get distracted by the sales, traffic jams, planning, decorating, and on and on. I'm not saying that any, any of these things are inherently bad or wrong. It's all about having a holy perspective through all of it taking time to check ourselves and each other during not only busy holiday seasons, but all year long. Are we willing to be honest with ourselves and ask hard questions like, are we keeping the main thing the main thing when life is whirling and swirling all around us? Are we willing to see the holiday madness with eyes that are wide open and not get caught up in it? Are we willing to free ourselves from the shallow story of cultural Christmas and enter the deep, life-giving waters of the Incarnation? Are we willing to free ourselves to worship with abandon? To say no to cultural Christmas is a step towards entering the story of Jesus as a participant, not a bystander. When we participate in the story of Jesus, we are led to a life of worship, not just on Sunday mornings or whenever we happen to watch the worship video, but every single day. The authors of Advent Conspiracy make this poignant statement. Our hearts are formed by what we worship. If we believe this is a true statement, and I do, then it behooves us to reflect on how we spend our time, our money, and our energy. If someone were to take a close look at our checking accounts with the purpose of discovering what we value, what would they find? If someone were to take a look at our calendars, our busy schedules, with the purpose of discovering what we value, what would they find? These are excellent questions to reflect upon in moments of solitude. And if you're willing to step into uncomfortable waters, do this exercise with a close spiritual friend so you can help each other identify what is valued most in your lives. When we value worshiping God, our hearts are formed more and more in the likeness of Christ. Having a personal encounter with Jesus moves people to worship. Here are some biblical examples of people being moved to worship. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, the shepherds. An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds. They were the first ones told of the birth of the Messiah. This in itself is a shocking fact, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. The point for today is how they responded. They said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Upon seeing the baby in the manger, just as the angel had said, the shepherds responded by worshiping and by going out and sharing the good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The people who heard the news that the shepherds shared were amazed. The shepherds had a personal encounter with the baby Jesus and their response was to worship and then to go and share the good news. In Matthew 2, we read the story of the wise men from the east who followed the star to where Jesus was. And the scripture reads, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When the wise men had a personal encounter with Jesus, they were moved to bow down worship and give him extravagant gifts gifts fit for a king the disciples lives were forever changed when they met jesus and responded to his call jesus said come follow me and i will make you fishers of people so they left their boats and their nets their families and their livelihood behind to follow Jesus. They weren't perfect, but by following Jesus, their lives became an act of worship. They were living testimonies to what it means to depend on God alone. They left all that they knew behind to go on a journey with Jesus that would change the world. Jesus himself is the perfect example of living a life of worship of living a life that valued above all else loving god and loving people jesus had time for people when he was interrupted he never treated people like they were interrupting him or like they were infringing on his schedule think about the story of mary and martha when jesus showed up at their house Martha was busy preparing food, and Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And Martha became disgusted with her sister and told Jesus that he should tell Mary that she needs to get up and help her in the kitchen. Martha, Martha, the Lord responded, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In this story, Jesus teaches us that it's most important to choose what has eternal value. Worshiping God, savoring precious moments of connection with God, has eternal value and helps us to worship in the ordinary moments of daily living. Being kind to a coworker who has snapped at us is an act of worship. Becoming educated and more aware of racial injustices and speaking up for those whose voices are not heard is an act of worship. Wearing a mask to the grocery store is an act of worship. Choosing to be fully present to someone who has disrupted our schedule is an act of worship. One day, many years ago, my friend Ray Stokes taught me the importance of letting a to-do list go. 
At the time, I was serving as the director of music at the First United Methodist Church in Valparaiso. And it seemed as if filing music was like that song that Lamb Chop would sing every week. This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they continued singing it forever just because this is the song, and on and on and on. Music filing is a never-ending job. So one day, Ray called me, and he said, Esta, I want to come in and help you organize the music. Well, I would never turn down help, right? But the one thing about Ray, my dear friend, is that he was suffering from prostate cancer. So I spoke with his wife before he came and she suggested putting the music on a table with the folders and everything and a chair for Ray to sit and organize the music. So I prepared the place for Ray and he came and, I, and he sat down and I, I explained to him what I would like for him to do and he said, fine, I can do that. So I went over to my desk to work while Ray was organizing music. So within a couple of minutes, Ray began asking me questions about my childhood and about my family and sharing stories about his family. So I got up from my desk and I moved over and sat with Ray and we just talked for that hour and a half. In earthly terms, I had accomplished nothing in that hour and a half. In retrospect, I can see that setting aside my work and the work that I had hoped Ray would get done was an act of worship. You see, Ray passed away a few months later, but on that day, we were fully present to each other, and that had eternal value. Remember the story of the sinful woman with the alabaster jar of expensive perfume? She washed Jesus' feet with her tears, wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. She was worshiping Jesus, but how did the Pharisees respond? They questioned why Jesus would let such an awful, sinful woman touch him. And why would Jesus allow this woman to pour expensive perfume on his feet when that perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor? The sinful woman showed eternal values. And the Pharisees? earthly, temporal values. They saw what she did as a waste. Jesus saw the deep gratitude and love of a forgiven woman. So what's the lesson for us in all of these stories in July of 2020? When we strive to love God, and love people every day, wherever we are. We are worshiping fully. When we worship fully, we won't get sucked into the cultural madness that tempts us to live in direct opposition of Jesus' call on our lives. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep 
of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. For the glory of God and for the sake of the world, may we worship God fully. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to take a moment to confess your sins silently. Please take a moment to wrap up your prayers. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. When we are in worship together, this is the time when we greet each other and pass the peace of Christ. Maybe this is a great day to call someone, hit pause, call someone, and share the peace of Christ with them, and maybe even invite them to receive Holy Communion with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who are worshiping with us this day and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of being the children of God, let us pray the prayer of our Lord's heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite you to receive Holy Communion in your homes now. Hey. 
in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
am a beloved child of God, called and sent to make a difference in the world. Yes, that is who we are. We are beloved children of God who are called to make a difference in this world by worshiping God fully every single day by loving God and loving people. And may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all today and remain with us forever. Amen.